is we are going to be looking at the graphs of the functions, and you have to be able to identify key features off of your graph. Make sure that's up. So some of our key features we're going to be dealing with, first one is determining whether the function is an increasing function. It's increasing because the graph will go up as you move from the left to the right. You always are going to be going left to right, just as if you were reading a book. You read your words left to right. A decreasing graph would then be moving down as you go left to right through the graph. So it's pretty easy to be able to identify when it's increasing and decreasing. What the tricky part is, is writing the notation to identify that the graph is increasing and decreasing. So let's try those first. So let's take a look at example A. So as I start with example A, I'm going to start over here on the left side of the graph. And I'm going to follow the graph. Use one of your colors and follow the graph until you get to the maximum point there. As we follow the graph, what is our pencil doing? Are we increasing or decreasing? Increasing. increasing. So I'm going to label this side as increasing. So I'm using the other color from the maximum, keep going to the right. What's our graph doing now? Decreasing. So this graph has both kinds. This graph is increasing at first, and then it's decreasing at first. So when we write that it's increasing and decreasing, we always need to look at your x values. So let's write yourself a little note here. You want to look at your x values. So what is that x value where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing? It's when x is a negative 2. So if I look at this, my increasing are for which x values? It's increasing when it was negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. How do those numbers compare to negative 2? Are they less than negative 2 or greater than negative 2? Less than. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3 is less than negative 2. So when x is less than negative 2, our graph was increasing. So then over here it was decreasing when x was negative 1, 0, 1, 2. How do those numbers compare to negative 2? Matt's? They're greater than. So our graph was decreasing when x was greater than negative 2. <coughs> It'll never be equal to because it's not increasing or decreasing at that point in time. That's when it's switching from increasing to decreasing. Does that make sense? Let's try it again. So over here on this one, I start on the leftmost part of the graph and I'm following the graph. What are we doing first? That one's decreasing first. So after we're decreasing, what does the graph start doing? And then it starts increasing. So again, what is that x value when it switches from de decreasing to increasing? 1, 2, Three. When x is 3 is when it switches. So if I look for the increasing part, because that's the first one in my table, it's increasing when x is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So how are those numbers compared to 3? Greater than 3. So when x is greater than 3, our graph is increasing. When is our graph decreasing? Yes? when x is less than 3. So then our third graph over here, if I follow my line, what's my graph doing? Increasing. Does this graph ever decrease? No. No, a line never decreases. A line is always either increasing or always decreasing. 
So when the thing is doing it for the whole time, so this graph is increasing for the whole time, we use three little letters to write that. X, and then it's a funky little E. It's kind of like a C with a line for it, through it. And then you have an R where it's two lines, and then you write your R. What that stands for, we're going to write ourselves a little note. X, funky little E, R. What that stands for is that's saying X is an element of the reals. So we got the X, E from element, R from reals, X, E, R. When you say X is an element of the reals, you're saying that X can be any number in existence. It could be a positive number, it could be a negative number, it could be a decimal, it could be a fraction, it could be absolutely positively any number. So since our whole graph was increasing the entire time, we say that the increasing portion is x is an element of the reals. It's at every single point for x is it that it's increasing. Since it's never decreasing, we just put a line through decreasing. That graph's never going to decrease. So increasing, decreasing. Good so far? Okay. So if we take a look up above, our next definition is positive. A graph is positive when it's located above the x-axis. And then it's negative when it's located below the x-axis. The reason being is you're looking at your y values for those ones. We're positive above the x-axis because that's when your y values are positive. It's negative below because that's when your y values are negative. That's why we say it's positive negative. <laughs> so let's take a look at it. Positive and negative is on the bottom of our chart. So we're going to go to the bottom of our chart for right now. So again, our graph is positive when it's above the x-axis. And it's negative when it's below. So our first graph there, is it ever positive? Yes. It's got this little piece here. It goes up and over that whole section right there is positive because it's above your x-axis. What is this number here when it starts becoming positive? And what is it here when it goes negative again? Zero. So our positive section for this first graph goes from negative 4 is less than x is less than 0. Whenever your section is in the middle like that, you put the two numbers on the outside, your x goes in the middle, always a less than sign. So negative 4 is less than x is less than 0. How many pieces of that first graph are negative? Two of them. You've got this piece that's negative, and you've got this piece over here that's negative. It does look like a wishbone. So again, the negative parts are at negative 5. When x is negative 6, it would be negative. When x is negative 7. So if x is less than negative 4, our graph is negative. That's the first part. When else is it negative? When x is what than 0? When x is greater than 0. And since they're two separate little pieces, we have to write that word or in the middle. Because you can't be less than negative 4 and greater than 0 at the same time. You can't be in two places at once. So you're either less than negative 4 or you're greater than 0. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. When is this graph positive? Always. Isn't the whole thing above the x-axis? Yeah. So since the whole thing is always positive, we write X, E, R. X is an element of the reals. Oh, my gosh. Oh. 
and then it's never negative, so we put a little line through negative. And then our third one, is it positive and negative? Yes. It changes right here. What's that x value? Zero. zero. It changes from being positive or being negative going to positive when x is zero. So it's negative at what x values? The negative ne x values, right? Negative one, negative two, negative three. That's when my graph is below the line. So when x is less than zero, our graph is negative. When is our graph positive? When x is greater than zero. Again, I feel like it's easy for you to be able to look at the graph and tell when it's positive and negative. It's writing the notation that's a little tricky sometimes. All right. Domain and range. We talked about domain and range last time. Remember, domain are your x values. Range are your y values. But instead of saying x values, y values, we're going to say domain and range. Got to start using the big kid terms. So what you have to ask yourself when you look at these graphs, when you're trying to decide your domain and range is, will the graph be able to use every single number that exists for that? So like if we're looking at this first graph, looking for our domain, so we're looking at our x values, will this graph keep going on? Yeah, it's got arrows. This graph is going to keep going on and on forever. So it will slowly work its way out to the sides. It's going to take a while, but it'll get there. So could that graph use every single x value? Yeah. yeah, it eventually will. So we say x is an element of the reals. That will use every single x value eventually. It's just a C with a line through the middle. All right, let's take a look at part B. Let's look at the domain for B. Again, it's got arrows on the end. So could it eventually be every single x value? So this one is also x is an element of the reals. And how about our domain for the last one? Can this eventually be every single x value? Yeah, yeah it's going to keep going this way. It's going to keep going to the left. So this one would be x is an element of the reals. I'm going to give you a little hint. With the exception of one graph that I'm going to teach you in this unit, domain is always x is an element of the reals. Hint. Only one graph where that doesn't happen. Well, no, because you have to be careful, because on your test I could change it up and maybe just give you points. So you just got to give me the x values from your points. If it's a continuous graph like this, then yes. All right, so our range is a little different. Range is not always as nice and easy to figure out as your domain. So again, with your range, you're asking yourself, can it be every single y value in existence? So if I look at this first graph here, can this be every single y value? No. Is it ever going to go up here? No, my graph will never, ever be up there. So I can't say that y is an element of the reals because it's not going to be everything. What is this highest value? Four. And then it's everything what then four? Less than. So, oh. so y is less than or equal to four. That would be our range for that one. It's not a crocodile. It's a less than sign. No, it's not a crocodile. No. Alright, how about for b? Can it be every single y number? No. So this one, the lowest y value, it would be 0, and then it's everything what than 0? Greater than. So y is greater than or equal to 0. And then how about for c? Can c be every single y value in existence? Yes, because it's going to keep going up, it's going to keep going down. So y is an element of the reals. Yes, 
because we're dealing with range, so we've got to write y. Range is the only time you're going to write y. All the other ones are always in terms of x. All right, and then our last thing in our chart, this one is really, really easy. It's so easy, though, sometimes people forget it, so you can't forget it. End behaviors. All you're going to do is tell us in what direction do the left and right side of the graph go. So my left side of my first graph is going down. So my left side is down. Which way is my right side going? Down. Left is going down. Right is going down. How about for the left side of my B graph B? Left is up. Right is also up. How about for graph C? Left side is down. down. Right side is up. That's our end behaviors. Pretty simple. As I said, it's so simple. A lot of people on your quiz are like, I don't remember doing that, but it was so simple. You just got to tell me which direction is it going? Going up or down? So this one is just talking about, again, taking a graph, being able to read different things off of the graph. In other words, interpreting the graph, as they like to say. So we are given this graph over the interval of negative 7 to positive 7. They told me that right up here, my graph goes from negative 7 to positive 7. This would also be your domain if they asked you for it. This one would not have a domain of x is an element of the reals because there's no arrows. It doesn't go on forever. This one is a restricted domain, as we call it. So part A, they want us to find the maximum and minimum values of the function, state the values of x where they occur as well. We have more than one maximum. We have more than one minimum. Right here, that end point on the left, that would be one of our maximums. So I'm going to state that as a max. Way up here, where x is negative 1, that's another maximum. And where's my third maximum? Right here. The other one is going off. And where x is 5. There's our other maximum. So that was where x was negative 7, negative 1, and 5. Those were our maxes. How many minimums do we have? How many minimums? Uh, no? Three. We got one here, one there, and then our third one at the end point. So what are those x values? Over here all the way on the left, this one is at what? Negative? Pretty sure that's where x is negative 5. Where's this one over here where x is 2? Then our last one is where x is 7. So those are our minimums. No. Part B, what is the y-intercept of the function? So let's find that first. Where's our y-intercept? What is that value? Six. So y-intercept equals six. Explain why the function cannot have more than one y-intercept. Caitlin? That's not the y reason why it can only have one. It does only have one. But this goes kind of goes back to what we were talking about last class. Because then it wouldn't be a function. If it has two y-intercepts, that means there's two range values for that one domain value. And we can't have that. So explain why the function cannot have more than one intercept, because then it's not a function.
All right, C, give the x-intercepts of the function. These are also known as the function's zeros because it's where the function equals a zero. So we've got to find our x-axis. We have 1, 2. Negative what? Where x is negative 6 and where x is negative 4. Those are our two x-intercepts. And as it says, known as zeros. Alright, so for this part, you might want to use one of your colors. Would you characterize the interval of negative 5, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to negative 1, as increasing or decreasing? Explain your choice. So I'm going to go to where x is negative 5 on my graph, and I'm going to follow it until I get to negative 1. What is our graph doing? Increasing. So I would say this is increasing. We have to explain our choice. What's the graph doing? The graph goes up as you move left. To right. So then part E, give one additional interval over which the function is increasing and one interval over which it is decreasing. So let's find another one where it's increasing. How about if we go from this minimum to that maximum? What are those x values from there to there? 2 to 5. So remember, we write this as 2 is less than x is less than 5. And then how many decreasing sections do we have to choose from? 3. Three. All right, if you want to do the first one, we can. So it's decreasing from here to here. So that's from where to where? Negative 7 is less than x is less than negative 5. You always got to put the smaller number first. And then number two, last one in our notes, we have using the graph below, find the values of the domain for which the function g of x is less than zero. They love to use this notation. So you have to remember, if the function is less than zero, what kind of a value is it, positive or negative? Negative. negative. So we're looking for when the function is negative. So how would I find that on my graph? It's got to be below the x-axis. So from here to here is negative. So what are our x values? What's that value? Negative 5 to what? To positive 5. So from negative 5 is less than x is less than 5. That's when our graph is negative.